YouTube. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Molding Skills and More. Today's video, we're going to go over how to set injection pressure um, and then how to set your hold or pack pressure. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go over the, the screen on my desktop and show you how you actually set it. And then we'll come out here on the floor. I'll go over the screen with you guys on actually how I would do it how I set it up pretty much myself um, this is how I've been doing it all my life from when I learned earlier in life um, so I hope this helps you guys out um, so let me go back to my desk I will show you guys the, the steps of what you're supposed to do okay okay so this is on my desktop okay so this will tell you um, <clears throat> How to set injection pressure. Set the injection pressure to the maximum available, okay? Set the cooling time to a safe value such that the part will be cool and reach the injection temperature before the mold opens. Set the injection speed to slow and make a part. The part should be short, okay? Now th these are all the steps that they go by. You can pull all this stuff offline. Um, a lot of the data that I get is offline or other molders. Um, I don't give you guys anything that I just put together that I think is right. I always try to do my research on it of what other people have done and stuff. So you set the pack and hold timer to zero. Pack and hold pressure to zero. You set the shot size and injection pressure to enable a short shot, okay? The mold temperature to normal value, set injection rate to a desired value, start single cycle, okay? Increase shot size to barely fill the part out, okay? The cushion should approximately be 0.25 inches. Add some to the shot size, set the, the cutoff point to just before cushion, no injection fill time so like i said the fill time you got to increase that fill time or you'll uh the fill time will limit on you increase injection pressure in 250 increments which i don't do that i automatically just bring it down after i get it in there but this is the standard that they tell you to go by adjust cutoff point to achieve 95 percent fill note the injection pressure needed and then perform uh, injection time optimization if required. So if you go in there, I'll show you how to do a gate free study and to show you how to adjust for pack and hold, okay? For setting the pack and hold, you wanna use half or two thirds of the injection pressure. We talked about that. So you'll see on the next clip of me talking about that pack and hold and that, okay? So, and then you're going to use, set the hold time length enough to freeze the gate. So if you do a gate freeze study, you'll see that on there. If you come down a little farther, you'll see it says, how do you calculate injection pressure in a hydraulic system? Okay, so you're going to multiply the hydraulic pressure by the machine intensification ratio to obtain the injection pressure, okay? So all presses come with an intensification ratio. So you'll have to look on your press and do that. And what you do is you just multiply it, whatever that is, okay? The, the, the two values together, okay? Okay, so I hope you guys understand that part of it. Now I'm back at the press. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you on the press side how I actually do it, okay? So if you're looking at the screen, this would be this square area here is all your first stage or your injection time your the, to fill this area here is your hold and pack screen okay so what you do is you take this position here you max that out so the max on here is 23935 okay you put that number in right there okay then you start off with low speeds and then you take all the hold completely to zero and the time to zero okay so what you're doing is you're starting off high. What it'll do is on the processing window, it'll actually give you the pressure right here, like 8,147 is the pack on this. When it's running, 
it's less than that 9,200, okay? The rule of thumb is, is whatever your injection is, once you're filling the part out to 95 to 98% full, then you take this number here. So let's say it, it only takes 9,000 to fill the part out. Then you add 200 here. On this press, since it's electric press, you add 2,000, okay? Because you add a zero to the end. So again, like I said, you'll take this number to the max, which is 23,935. You'll start out with your velocities low as possible. And then you'll just leave this at zero, that at zero. You'll start filling the part out until you get the part about 95 to 98% full, okay? Then what you're gonna do, then you'll put that number here, that will be your injection pressure. The actual whatever it is here, that number will be here plus 200 on a hydraulic press. Electric press will be plus 2000, okay? You gotta remember that. Then you'll come over here, whatever this number is, let's say you're at 9000 here. So then you gotta take a half of that number is where you wanna start out at on here for your hold pressure or pack time, okay? So if this here is at 10,000, then you wanna start at 5,000 over here. This is a high trail job. So this high trail job needs to stay the same automatically so you don't get no sinks or anything like that in the part. But rule of thumb is this will be zero, that'll be zero. You'll start out here, slow speeds. You increase each time on the speeds going up. You gotta remember too, nozzle temp, or the nozzle on your press, the nozzle size needs to be one size smaller than whatever the screw bushing size is, okay? If it's not, what'll happen is if the, the nozzle's smaller than what the screw bushing is, your pressures are gonna go way up. If, the, if they're one size smaller than the sprue bushing, your pressures ain't gonna be that high because you're not using a lot of pressure to get inside the mold, okay? So remember that. Remember that this number here, you want it to be max to start out with. Then you'll use these numbers. You can use intensification ratio and all that, but what I do is I start out with this high. You already know where your shot size and stuff is sometimes. If it was a brand new thing, then you'll start off increasing your shot size little by little until you got it to where you wanted it at. But this number always, if you're doing it right, this number will come way down. Then you take half of that for your hole pressure. Okay, does that make sense at all? I mean, this is how I've always processed. I've always processed where you take, put the injection at the max, take your uh, speeds, start off slow until you get the part about 95, 90, 8% full, then you take half of that injection pressure, and then you put that over as your holding pack, okay, and start off there. The injection pressure that you have, you wanna have it on a hydraulic press 200, add 200 to it, and then on an electric press, you wanna add 2,000 because you add a zero to the end, okay? So, <clears throat> let me tell you this. What that does is that actually creates what they call a pressure limit, okay? so. If you're fresh, let's say it's injected material into the into the mold, let's say it reaches past that two extra hundred that you put on there or that extra 2,000, it's gonna stop the press from filling too much more plastic into the mold or flashing out your mold or whatever. This will help you to where it's pressure limited. That way it will not overpack your tool. This will help you and save you in the long run. So remember that whenever you're setting these up correctly, if you only add 200 or 2,000, that's it's gonna help you out. It's gonna save you in the long run. Okay, guys. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I was informative. I hope that um, you guys understand the screens. I will try to write some stuff down to show you next time. But remember, max on the injection profile, which is stage one, and then this is your holder pack. Everybody calls it or stage two. Take this to the max, speed slow, starting out, increase, going up to get the part to fill out. As you go up, your pressure should go up a little bit, okay? Remember the nozzle tip, guys. Crucial nozzle tip. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, peace. 
Okay, this is a different press. I wanted to show you a different on the press here. So this one here is set at 8250, okay? And then the hold is set at 5000, which is a little higher than half, but I just wanted to show you this, okay? So then if you go in here and you look, this is how it's been running. So it's running about 8085 is where it's been consistent on the injection pressure, okay? Your fill time is good, your cycle time is good, your cushion's good. So the key is this right here. So if it was to pressure limit itself, let's say it went past that 82, went past that 82, it would flash out the tool on this one. If it went higher than that 82, that's why we got it set there. You can see right here, it's at 8,079. Okay, and then the pack, the holes right there at the same, okay? So on this press, what happens is, this has got so many horn pins and stuff on it that if you have this too high, like they had it set at 10,000 at one time, we can't run this press. So sometimes on your injection pressure, you might not have the injection pressure limit high, too much higher than what it's supposed to be. That way you don't flash out the tool. Now on this tool here, it does have a lot of horn pins on it. You'll see it's getting ready to open in seven seconds. Um, but you'll see how when it opens up, it's got all these horn pins on there. This part here will flash out really easily because it's a four cavity tool. So the key on this is to keep that right there and to keep that like where it's supposed to be at right there. So the, the main thing is, is sometimes you might not, might not have to have half then the pack and hold pressure. Sometimes you can be lower, sometimes you can be a little higher. Okay, and same thing for your injection pressure limit. Sometimes you might not have to go 200 or 2000 higher. Sometimes you might have to go a little lower to where if it does shoot and it continues to use more pressure, if, like let's say there's a part stuck in the part in the press, then you don't overpack the press and flash out the tool or something, okay? I wanted to add that to this video, okay? I just didn't want you guys to see that, okay?